चैप्टर सिक्स शिवानंद आश्रम प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस स्पिरिचुअल ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस विद हाई एम्स एंड ऑब्जेक्ट्स शुड बी स्टार्टेड ओनली बाय महात्माज हु आर एब्सोल्युटली फ्री परफेक्ट एंड अनसेल्फिश इफ रिलीजियस इंस्टीट्यूशंस आर स्टार्टेड बाय सेल्फिश पीपल दे बिकम फाइटिंग सेंटर्स एंड ए मीनिंग्स टू सोसाइटी and bring ruin to those who are associated with the workers in the long run through ill managed managed institutions and ashrams people lose faith in god and religion and condemn all mahatmas as pseudo yogis sometimes selfish persons start spiritual institutions as business undertakings they misguide the people even an ashram started by a self realized person with high aims and objects in the early stages may get polluted later on by mercenary motives the founders must have extraordinary capacity to serve mankind then and then alone can real service be done at all times when there is lack of interest and shraddha in the householders it becomes difficult to carry on systematic work above all it is extremely difficult to get workers with ability and devotion these days aspirants do not appreciate much the value of selfless service many of the ashrams suffer for lack of able workers the ashram grew by itself i never thought of starting an ashram when the great rush of students and devotees came to me for spiritual guidance with a view to render help to them, them and to make them useful to the world i created some fields of activities for their evolution and for public good encouraged them much in their studies and their sadhana and arranged necessary comforts and conveniences for their boarding and lodging using the donations i received from some admirers for my personal use thus in course of time i found around me a huge ashram and an ideal institution with congenial environment a big spiritual colony shivanand nagar i did not work with big plans or schemes i did not approach any great person or maharaja for getting money the world appreciated the service done here on right lines a little help came from the divine source and i carefully utilized every cent of it for bringing maximum spiritual good to the world several new palatial buildings crop up every year and yet there is lack of accommodation for the inmates and the stream of visitors at every stage there was splendid development of work on many occasions devotees pressed me to undertake propaganda tours for collecting money that was impossible for me i take delight in giving and serving all In 1940 grand arrangements were made for an extensive tour in the Punjab. I sent a telegram at once and cancelled the program. The telegraphic message conveys the attitude with which I managed the affairs of the ashram. I do not care if the divine life society flourishes or not. If it is the grace of the Lord and if we carry on our sadhana and service with the right attitude, bhava and shraddha, help is bound to come from divine source. let me do as much as possible by remaining in my own small kutir on the banks of the ganga when the honey is there the bees will come by themselves shun ruthlessly the desire for money in a short period the work grew regular classes are now conducted on yoga bhakti vedanta and health today over 300 students live by my side with all comforts and conveniences tread the path of path of yoga and serve the world in a variety of ways glory to the lord blessed are the aspirants students of different cults and faiths come from various countries and stay with me for weeks and months devotees from all parts of india come to the ashram frequently and join the collective sadhana and satsang when every where everyone is welcome as qualification for first class aspirants Vivek Vairagya Shat Sampat and Mumukshatva are prescribed by the scriptures Some orthodox cults have caste restrictions and insist on the students passing through the four stages of life Ves Brahmacharya Grihastha Vanaprastha and then Sanyas When students come to me I do not enquire anything about their qualification position parentage caste or capacity 
I welcome even thieves and rogues, persons of tender age and those who are sickly and old also. I know very well that they will all become dynamic yogis when they are put in the company of sages and saints or when they are allowed to stay in a place charged with marvelous spiritual vibrations. Perfect Freedom the spiritual vibrations of the ashram have a great beneficial effect in molding people in the path of yoga. Thousands have felt this. I do not impose any rules or restrictions on the aspirants who desire to stay in the ashram. Any number of persons can come and stay here as long as they like, and they can go out the moment they wish. I do not demand any work, service or help from them. I permit them to carry on their own own study and sadhana and help them in all possible ways. The highly developed aspirants who appreciate selfless service for their own evolution spend all their time in carrying out useful works and manage the affairs of the society nicely. It is all yoga for them. They are all yoga bhrashtas, living examples and models for the world. Thousands of aspirants have come to the ashram. Several hundreds have, hundreds have gone out after proper training either for intense sadhana in seclusion or dynamic work in cities. And yet the ashram is always full and every day at least a dozen highly educated candidates crave permission to live in the ashram. The students are mysteriously helped by, helped by attending the satsang and taking bath in the holy Ganga. Through some work they all come in close touch with me and learn a lot in a short period. Quickly they develop all divine qualities without much effort and become great yogis. Miracle of Miracles How is it possible to run an ideal ashram under the above circumstances? It is a great puzzle for many. It looks like a miracle to the world. People are staggered. I do not worry even a bit if the secretaries and managers of the ashram come to me frequently with a big list showing a statement of debts extending to a lakh of rupees. People's wonder knows no bound when, in spite of such debts, I sanction the purchase of several automatic printing machines for the university press or latest model high-class cameras and largers and projectors for the studio or the construction of big halls, temples and ghats by the, side, by the side of the Ganga. People complain that here they get more food and facilities than they need for their living. The inmates feel very rich and happy. Some may look as ordinary villagers if you may not have had much education, but I find that everyone who lives in the ashram is a great saint with wonderful hidden faculties and talents. Prominent persons who visit the ashram are stunned to see the wonderful development in the inmates, admire their capacities and inquire, Dear Swamiji Maharaj, how do you find so many people of talents? Is there any instance of any uh, of my having asked any inmate of the ashram to go out or expressed ill feelings or used harsh words to him? None at all. When I have serious complaints that a particular sadhak disturbs the peace of the ashram or interferes with the smooth working of the institution, I ask the man to go out and live independently in some other suitable place. I give him enough money for travelling expenses and a note of introduction to devotees for helping him. I give him spiritual ad advice at the time of his departure and pray for his welfare and enlightenment. In a few days or weeks, the man feels the ashram as his own sweet home and comes back with a changed angle of vision and hurt. I heartily welcome him. I forget the past easily. I do not have a vindic vindictive nature. I permit useless persons, pessimistic people and even those who criticize me and, and attack the management to stay in the ashram. After a short day, they are transformed miraculously. I see joy and bliss in their face. I, how aspirants should be cared for? I have unlimited spontaneous generosity, love and affection for all the students of yoga irrespective of their age or sex, qualifications or abilities. I am highly pleased with those who do japa or a little meditation or some kind of service for the society, the sick and the poor. I give ample scope for all types of people to remain in the ashram and evolve through sadhana or work for the spiritual uplift of mankind. 
I take special care of the old people, young aspirants and the helpless sick persons. I distribute sweets and fruits first of all first to all of them and then take a small portion. I remember now how, how I carried milk and curd to the old sadhus in Swargashram and shampooed their legs and gave them medicine when they were sick. Even now I send a portion of my own food first to some sannyasi students and visitors in the ashram. For some years I myself carried a portion of my own food to a few hard workers who were taking a meager diet and had very poor health. Later on, when the work increased in all directions, I kept two young brahmacharis by my side always to distribute fruits and biscuits to all the inmates of the ashram. These were not thrown into the rooms in the way in which worldly people heartily give charity. I had the bhav that I served the Lord in that form. I did prostration first and then offered them. When I occasionally send money or books or eatables to my students at outstations, I invariably say, May this be kindly accepted. For spiritual attainment, the bhav, the inner feeling and the motive are more important. This came to me naturally and was not created consciously by any effort. It was not like the service done by egoistic people for name and fame. This one virtue of voluntarily serving the sick, the poor and the helpless with all humility is my main yoga and this one virtue alone helped me to develop all divine qualities and to see the Lord behind all names and forms. Helpfulness and love towards all Due to prarabdha or vikshep of the mind or a craving for sensual enjoyments or for some form of luxury or a curiosity to see various places, people try to go away from the ashram. Some advanced students after some years of staying in the ashram like to gain some experience from meditation in the interior parts of the Himalayas. I admire them and give them all facilities. They all depend on alms for their food but I also send them enough money for their special milk and fruits. Some students who have a pushing nature desire to help humanity and desire to go out on lecture tours. I organize spiritual conferences and send such students to various centers. In the ashram in the past a few students with powerful senses and cravings criticized me and abused the ashram and the whole of the Himalayas and left the place in anger. I blessed them and prayed for light, knowledge and proper understanding and inner spiritual strength to them. But they all go out only to come back to the ashram with a thorough change of heart. I welcome them with great love and affection. I forget the past quickly. Thus a man may go out a hundred times and come back. My love for the man is greater. It is not through compulsion or rules or regulations that men can be transformed into divine beings. They all must have convincing experiences of their own. In the ashram, everyone is in charge of some important section of work or other. When people go out suddenly, the work would naturally suffer. There would be a lot of irregularities when new persons handle the work. That might result a great loss also. I care only for the individual's progress and prosperity, knowledge and peace and therefore do not stand in the way of anyone who wishes to go out. Individual Attention and Consideration Some of the letters written by me to my students at outstations several years ago explain how I care for my students. 1. Shri A. is wonderfully improving. He is the senior Acharya of the kitchen nowadays. He is the senior typist too. He is a senior typist also. Kindly supply him with one set of the Upanishads, a fountain pen and a copy of my practice of Vedanta from my account. 2. Kindly attend on Shri SRC carefully. His health is already poor. He has some complaints now. His food is meager. Kindly supply him saltish biscuits and fruits. He does not like sweets. May you ever abide in the Lord. 3. Whenever you are in need of money, write to me at once. In the name of Tapasya, do not spoil your health. You can do just as you like. Anyhow, spend the time usefully. May Lord bless you. 4. How is your health? Record all your experiences and send me a report of how you spend the 24 hours. My dear Yogiraj, you can return to the ashram at any moment. 
This is your spirit, own spiritual home. For uninterrupted sadhana and perfection, the following items are essential. Fine health through prayers, rest, relaxation with agreeable diet and sadhana. A calm and cool place with spiritual vibrations. Simple food at regular intervals. Help of elderly persons and guidance from advanced students of yoga or from guru. Facility for medical aid in case of need. These ensure quick spiritual progress. Without worry or anxiety, you can then progress nicely in the practice of yoga. And you have all the above facilities here in the ashram. May I send you money for your train fare? Cordial greetings. Encouragement and advice. I am always grateful to those who have served the divine mission. I value their services immensely and am ever lavish in showering praises. I also look to the personal necessities of my students, their health and spiritual evolution. Some years before I wrote to one of my students, first, take care of your health, take great care of your health. You cannot live on grass, water and air alone. Give up this idea at once. Take nutritious food and plenty of energy giving fruits. Learn to relax. This is very important. Go for a long brisk walk. walk. You have done solid work this year in the printing line. This will amply suffice. It is all his work. It is all his grace. Feel this. Are you comfortable there? May I send you money for your personal expenses? Milk and nutritious food are needed when people work in the active field of dissemination of knowledge or do rigorous sadhana in seclusion. You have done miracles. It is not flattery. I, have, I never expected so much from you. Do not overwork. Regulate your energy. Take rest in suburbs when you are tired. On Ekadasi hold kirtans in different centers. Hold weekly classes. Have silent individual talks. You can influence people more by this method. Never sleep in householders' houses. Run away from ladies. No play and joking with them. Third. Do not be afraid of the cold at Rishikesh. Do not be unnecessarily alarmed. You may use my blankets, take milk and tea from the shop on my account. May you enjoy the peace of the eternal. Fourth, take rest. Do not work hard. Apply cooling, cooling oil on the head. Do pranayama in the early morning when it is cool. It will recharge you with abundant energy. Take fruits also. Never neglect morning meditation and evening meditation. The goal of a sannyasi is Vedantic realization. Aham Brahmasmi. Brahmanishtha is your food, drink, and all in all. This can be kept up along with Karma Yoga. I have great respect for the Sanskrit language and I encourage my students to study Sanskrit, whoever has an aptitude for it. Though it may be at the cost of the ashram itself, I wrote once to my student, If I possess a ghost or a tree that bears currency notes and coins as fruits, I can easily satisfy the, these Sanskrit students. Their needs are endless. I have to do something for helping them. They are doing wonderful research work and have deep study. Their study will seriously be interfered with if the books are not provided. I wish to start a Sanskrit college with, with a large number of students and arrange all facilities for the sannyasi students to do research work in Sanskrit literature. We should have mercy and must serve others at the sacrifice of our wants even. It is my inborn nature. That is the dharma of a saint. Spirit of Accommodation when one of my students had left the ashram for some reason, I at once felt that his valuable experience and faculty should not be lost for the service of humanity. So I wrote thus, I was sending you money for your pocket expenses. The money was returned with the remark, left the place. I am always at thy feet to serve you at all times. You only refuse it. Why should you depend on anybody when I am here to serve you in all ways? Why should you live in cities with worldly persons? There are various sections here in which you can work gently, mildly, slowly, a little without mixing with anybody, independently having connections with me only. All sections of work suffer for want of people and proper supervision. 
even if you look after a little work in the correspondence section it will be a great help to the world you can assist me in a hundred ways do not work hard as before you do, you do a little work without any responsibility this is god's blessing and grace take plenty of rest and do a little work you can remain away from the ashram your food will will be placed in your room i shall give you money for your expenses there is no dearth for food for you here i do not refuse food to anyone why should you live in cities gradually you will lose all your faculties when you are not in touch with work the worldly atmosphere is not congenial to spiritual progress therefore come at once to rishikesh may i send you train fare if you like you can live here for 6 months and 6 months in cities if you change your outlook vision imagination and attitude a bit you can be happy here and everywhere man suffers on account of his own imagination and his old habit of thinking he never allows himself to be changed this is maya adjust and adapt be happy and cheerful at all times evolve quickly and become a dynamic yogi and bring light and knowledge to the whole world who can start ashrams an ashram is a glorious center to ensure world peace many enthusiastic persons start ashrams with a fine letter head that is not enough the starting of new ashrams by beginners will not bring good results to the world it needs special faculties to run an ashram successfully for beginners that will be a hindrance and for advanced students that will be a downfall many years ago some sanyasins wrote to me for financial help and advice for improving the activities of their ashrams and the reply i gave to one of them is reproduced below that clearly explains my attitude and principles beloved swami ji your achievements and ambitions aims and objects are laudable indeed o swami ji aspire not for gurudom comforts name and fame when you start an ashram or a religious society generally those who start ashrams are humble in the beginning and do some service when they become rich and well established they care not for public service or individual evolution they become arrogant and autocratic beware of temptations and work as a meek sevak always even after self realization leave not the daily routine of sadhana i do not know any rich raja or zamindar i have no disciples some aspirants who want real spiritual training consider me as their guru i take great care of them that is all i cannot help with help you with money i am serving the world by a variety of ways and work through all ashrams mats and religious institutions if you do public service with a selfless spirit if people see the spirit of renunciation you then they themselves will vo- vo- volunteer to help you in every way do not move heaven or earth for money try not your luck through derby sweep it is a pity for sadhus to think of such schemes nowadays aspirants do not care to look to their spiritual progress they shave their head color their clothes and remain at rishikesh for some time and then pass for great yogis they begin to collect money for starting ashrams for leading comfortable life there are enough ashrams and mats in india sincere selfless workers are rare before one starts an ashram one must have been leading an exemplary life his very presence must give peace power and bliss to all only then one can one successfully run the institution ideals must not be forgotten before starting an ashram the mottos ambitions and aims are no doubt grand charming and attractive as soon as a little fund and fame come the ideal is forgotten the spirit of selfless service dwindles away the objects are abandoned the founders want to lead a comfortable life with some chosen disciples and followers even granting that the founders are able to live an ideal life their disciples will not be able to manage it with the same spirit later it becomes a place of quarrel or a business house the head of the ashram and the inmates there should lead a life of vairagya absolute renunciation the ashram run by such people stands as a center a nucleus of perennial peace bliss and joy it attracts everyone 
millions all over the world derive inspiration the world is always in need of such ashrams every sanyasi every yogic student has got some defect or other it is only a full blown yogi who will be absolutely free from evil qualities and defects all are in the path of evolution everybody is likely to err sometimes even very often often become tolerant see good in everything slight rupture or friction is bound to come between friends and workers at times between sanyasins too one must excuse the other must reunite and forget the past you must have a tendency to grasp only the good in others and try to emphasize it in your everyday life no one is entirely bad remember this point well you must have adaptability when you mix with others have perfect control over impulses only then will more workers feel happy to live with you and serve your ashram may the noble mission established by you gloriously prosper i shall be always happy to help you